Chapter 951 Rampage Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of the Pod D Cast. I'm the best guy ever, and this is Hypocrite. Hello everybody. Looks like cover of Shonen Jump this week is Pirates, and that's cool. I think it's because there's a new One Piece movie. I think it's for that. Yeah, One Piece Stampede. stampede. Yeah, they, they have like a double page spread as well, uh, of of oh, right. a bunch of people presumably in the movie eating dinner, and Law Indeed. is is getting a big old mayonnaise burger sauce all over his head, and he's not Poor happy bastard. about it at all. <laughs> as we've said many times, or at least as I've said. God, do I not care about movies because they aren't canon. They have no impact on any important events. Okay, that being said, <laughs> One Piece Stampede Dinner. Nice. Nice. Uh, uh, ironically, Chapter 951 today, Rampage. Not a stampede, you see, but a rampage. Let's see what is going on with that. Yes, so we're back in the Wano Country Flower Capital where after mm. the execution of Yasuewe... Mm -hmm. um, things have calmed down, and Orochi has been informed that everybody escaped. Basically, everybody yes. escaped, except for Law and, and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And uh, they, these guys, this, the, the tall-haired ninja man, um, is informing him that if they have both the Straw Hat and the Law, uh, they have biggest criminals. Uh, once the word is spread that we have captured both of them, all those pirates will fight amongst themselves. Until they're Because they left. think they still have straw hat right now. Yeah, they they think they still have control of the prison, so that's gonna that's gonna be whoops for them. Um, Indeed. I'm not exactly sure why they think the pirates will fight amongst themselves. Um, it's I just assume... sort of like a big uh -huh. like uh, the captains are gone. Yeah, I think that just with the leadership gone, like the plan has fallen apart, and then their their separate little interests, which we actually see have a little bit later in this very chapter. Uh, will split their attention and, like, just inevitably considering, like, the stakes and the potential issues. Like, they might betray each other. Like, they might try to sell out the other crew to get mercy. You know, th things of this nature is my is my estimation. Yeah, so now we've got, like, introduction of a, yet another small group of characters. Indeed. Um, the, the samurai of the Mimawarigumi. Mimawarigumi. Yes. Which are just cool. like samurai police guys, I guess. SWAT yeah, team. I, uh, they're historical. That's cool. That's cool. They, they got a big stone-faced guy, or an orange guy, depending on what color he has <laughs> as skin. It could uh, be anything knowing Oda. We have no way of knowing. Yes, everything that you think is brown is probably pink. <laughs> uh, this girl... Like that ninja uh, uh, girl. Yeah, this yeah, girl, cool. I'm thinking, hmm, pink hair, blue hair, yellow hair, no, it's going to be like d deep red or something. Ugh. Ugh, Oda, you fucked me up with the color choices. Ah, uh, yeah, another squad. None of these characters are going to matter. I'm telling you right yeah. now, none of them matter. They're not, because they don't have lines and they don't have distinct enough designs, they're on an equal level as, like, those ninjas we saw who work under that one guy. They yeah. don't matter. This they're, is just, not... they're just going to be here to, like, do an attack um, when there's, yeah. like, a big brawl. Like in Whole Cake, when some of the people... Who they did have mm -hmm. names, but not all of them really did anything except for one attack, like when Sanji was escaping. Yeah, yeah. very true, very true. Yeah, th these guys will be used in like when they when the big battle breaks out, there will be a shot of these guys, and we'll think to ourselves, "Oh, I recognize those guys there participating in the battle." How interesting. <laughs> That's my name. My reactions. name is in this comic. That's my name. <laughs> it's a good one. <laughs> okay. Anyway, now we're on to Japanese wanted posters. How fun. And all our boys are getting in trouble for their various misdeeds. All right, but we don't see those yet. We see they're being set up. But now Sanji and... Sh Shinobu. 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 Oh, yeah. It's, she's like a Shinobi, but a Shinobu. I should, I should remember that. Uh, here they yeah. are, monologuing to themselves about who's captured. All the samurai with the sa crescent moon, they're all in jail. And ooh, wouldn't it be crazy if they broke out of there? Wouldn't that just be very convenient? Yes. I mean, they're not saying that, but I'm saying that. That's I mean, going to it's it's yeah, very clearly like if there's mm -hmm. gonna be a time, or well, uh, if there's gonna be a thing that happens in yeah. uh, the the capital, it's gonna be at the breakout of all these guys, so that mm -hmm. we can get them on a boat to go to Onigashima to beat Kaido. Exactly. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. um, so I, more I, I assume Sanji and Shinobu are going to be working through that. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. They 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 mentioned the whole thing of like oh they were wrongly imprisoned and and uh, uh, Yasuie made it so that you know people knew he, that he told lies which made them look innocent though they are they are actually literally part of the rebellion so yes. according to the law they should be wrapped up but you know he's a bad man so yeah, yeah. Orochi is not going to let them out even though mm -hmm. um, he was wrong uh, quote Maybe. unquote wrong. And uh, the guards are, you know, whispering to each other like, "Oh, what? Why is this? Why are they not let, being let out?" And Orochi will not let them because then it would it would show weakness from Orochi's side, mm -hmm. you know, to let to 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 uh, to lend any credence to this idea that Yasuie was telling the truth, which he I wasn't. I appreciate in in very very true. But I, yeah, I, and I was gonna say like I'm I'm glad they're not playing by like dumb storybook rules of like. Oh, because the good guy made a really good argument, then the bad guy had to do what he said because he was right and he had to admit it. He's, you know, being like, nah. Yeah. He's being, you know, like Cersei Lannister -y or just like, nah, fuck the rules. I don't give a shit. They're in jail. Fuck them. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. good. That's that's what a ruler it, would do. I think it, it, it's sort of a clever setup because it sets up the fact that guards know that it's not correct. And so mm. the, the, oh, the. They might be sympathetic later on, maybe. Yeah, they might be sympathetic later on when mm -hmm. something else happens. But for, in, immediately. Uh, mm -hmm. In this in this current thing, he his words didn't like solve the initial problem of all the people in jail. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So that you think it was pointless, but then later it's going to actually pay off, and the guards are going to think yeah. Orochi's yeah. actually stupid. I very much agree, and I suspect that uh, Yasuie will feature heavily in the inevitable flashback of uh, you know of Lord Odin and whatnot. That's, Man, that's we, we should have a flashback for the amount of times you said, I can't wait for the Lord Odin flashback. <laughs> oh, damn, that's so true. <laughs> you said it for, like, so like the last 15 episodes, a.k.a. 10 years. Forever. Yeah, as long... Yeah, that's basically true. I mean, if flashbacks are a 100% staple... Has there ever been an arc in One Piece without a flashback? I guess the Davy Back fight, I don't think had a flashback. I can't think of one other arc. That oh did no, not no! Have a I think I think that may have had a flashback to um, when the guy had the horse, and he's like, oh, "I remember that." horse. Oh my god, that was a fucking flashback in that <laughs> arc! Jesus Christ! <laughs> oh my. Okay. <laughs> Every single I didn't arc has a flashback. That one. <laughs> uh, I think I think that's true. Uh, although I mean, okay. To be fair, flashbacks are very useful. It's not like you know, it's such an amazing thing. Um, but man, One Piece, Oda sure loves his fucking flashbacks, and as do I, Oda. Keep them coming. I will guzzle them. They're great. Yeah. Uh, so, okay, uh, anyway. <laughs> Sanji notices a bunch of people making balloons uh, for... They're lanterns, well, you troglodyte. You well, fucking gaijin you know piece what, of shit. You know what? I'm racist, so what are you going <laughs> to yeah, say about fair. that? Uh, mm, they're making little good. sky ships for the fire Festival. <laughs> um, they're going to be flying all over the place. Uh, I assume that's going to play some sort of role. Symbolic role, I'm guessing. It'll be something. Well, like, like it'll be a good time to attack from the sky, or a good time to, like, you know... The, mm -hmm. the releasing of all these things is, like, some sort of distraction. You know, all the things that are in the Fire Festival that would be oh, good and, distractions and, uh, would be good, like, times mm -hmm. to strike. Very I'm true. Guessing. And a as they say, this is for the Fire Festival, and that's when they're attacking, so certainly, you know, same day. And it's an... But okay, well, here's a thought. And apparently, they say these are. Sanji's like, oh, everyone's bummed out. They're still going to want to do a festival. But actually, these are to. Uh, they represent those who have moved on. Those who have. It's a procession for mourning those who have left this world and have died. Um, all I'm saying is, Oda really likes to tie big, like, metaphorical gestures into, like, physical climaxes of arcs. Uh, best example of all being ringing the bell in Skypea, of course. Could there or, perhaps or like um, Drum Island yeah. with the Sakura Blooms. Oh, absolutely, absolutely true. Um, and I, I just wonder, perhaps, you know who a character who features prominently in Odin lore, who has died, who it might be appropriate to remember with these things in some capacity? Our boy, what was his name? Kozuki? Kozuki Odin. Yeah, that was his name. Um, flashback time, baby. My flashback alarms are going off. They are loud and proud, and that's... Yeah, a, may, a thought. May, it may might may even be if this is exactly how it happens. Uh, I called it, mm -hmm. but may even be like mm -hmm. the lanterns are going up, and then it flashed back to a time when the lanterns were going up, and Lord Odin oh. was putting them up. He was like, ah, mm -hmm. I remember my granddad who was dead or something. <laughs>
Something like that. So Just like a the, fi the fire festival many years ago when Lord Odin was, you know, a rapscallion who yeah. took shits in the street and punched babies. Mm, and, and everyone said, hey, you can't do that. And he said, whatever. I'm going to join the Pirate King. <laughs> we, regardless of what happens, we're going to have some very pretty, I'm guessing, double spreads of, of Japanese landscapes with skies filled with lanterns illuminating the night sky. And I look forward to that. That's going to be very cool. One way or another. All right. Now we see the the the, mm. the Japanese styled uh, wanted posters, which are very cool. Mm -mm. Yes, indeed. I Not like very Sanji's. Accurate, but well, I mean, you know that if you've seen the old styles of paintings, they don't look like people. Well, okay, I get, it's a joke, so fair enough. I won't <laughs> get too autismal about it. Uh, I like Sanji's mouth. I like White Bear right there. He looks just like a guy. Yes. <laughs> Uh, it's the best he's ever looked. Oh, and there he is on the next page. What's up, Beppo and the boys? Yeah, so this is interesting. Uh, Beppo and Penguin yeah. and Sangrui. I forget. I don't remember the, that guy's name. I, yeah. I, I saw them on Wanted posters, those names, so I remember them a little. Uh, fucking, they escaped. Haha, -ha, how do they do that? What? That was that was kind of easy. What 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 what, what could possibly have happened? They, get, they go to Nami. They give her... Uh, a one of the the symbols and uh yeah what was it yes we died well, they, they, apparently he gives him the a paper saying that uh, nami we got a huge important update this paper the symbol that uh was being used for the rebellion yasuye has a message and it's these two additional lines were drawn through the snake on the bottom this was his last message to everyone it's super important you get this to everyone because it means something really important so, uh, so yeah. this is, I mean, as we go forward, we see that Nami's like, oh, shit, I got to get this to everybody. Here I go. I'm going to bring this message to everybody. And then we flash back and we see that Hawkins was engaged in a uh, prisoner release when he captured Law due to the stalemate. It appears they agreed that Law would uh, become their prisoner if Drake released the other, th at least these three boys. And I assume that's all his crew members that were captured. That was yeah. probably the exchange you made. Yeah. So that so and here he is. He has released them. He does his cool voodoo things. He lets their souls go. He's an honorable man, Mr. Hawkins, and off law goes and says, "You cannot tell the others about me getting caught." Okay, and so, so now just before we get to the next part, before uh, right, going back to this line drawing through the thing. Uh, do you think what happened is that? Hawkins is actually the one who knew about the symbol and updated it with these two lines, and this I, is actually like a an undermining tactic that I Hawkins definitely stole? think. I definitely mm -hmm. think this is like lie to the it's Straw Hats clear. and make them fuck up the plan by right, telling them right. that Yasuie himself did this, yes, uh, that's which what will I change too. the plan and and all that. Um, I was a little confused at first as to what mm -hmm. the the exchange was. I don't think we're supposed to know exactly what has changed, because Hawkins getting yeah, it's giving, definitely still in code. Like he's still a pr presumably torturing Law for information. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe mm -hmm. he already got the information about the 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 symbol meaning something, um, or or maybe he hasn't. <laughs> maybe. But like maybe. he 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 does the thing where he re releases the three lives, the three. Um, straw men or whatever mm -hmm. of his mm -hmm. uh of beppo and the guys so that if hawkins were to be cut they won't get hurt anymore that's his power right. but to get rid of that and to send them off to do something seems like like he's losing his leverage on the situation because now law doesn't have the, to worry about like killing hawkins so i think maybe here's my here's my hypothesis True. i think Law has a, a genius plan, because he's so smart, and at the moment, he is letting uh, Hawkins have him as a straw man, so that if mm -hmm. Law were to be cut, Hawkins, or, or Hawkins to be cut, Law would get her instead, and that's mm -hmm. like a more, you know, so he's letting his crew members go, and maybe fucking over the plan? Uh, I'm not sure. I guess we'll lo we'll learn a little more once, once uh, Kinemon gets the message. The message might actually be, like, uh, Law is captured, or something, or it might be. But I, but yeah, I don't let's... know that Law would understand the symbols and how to change it in a way that would help anyone. 
I, I agree. I think that only the those boys know. Let, let's entertain the possibility for a moment. Do you think it's literally just possible as Beppo presents it that Yasuie did in fact edit this snake and draw the extra lines? Like, do you think that the, it really was Yasuie who like did any of that shit? Um, I think it's, know, I, I, I agree with you that it seems like it's not that because we never saw any of that before. It seems like it's Hawkins doing some sort of nefarious scheme. But the thing is, like, it doesn't look like later on Beppo is really worried that, like, he's betraying the Straw Hats or anything. He seems just, like, worried about law. He doesn't specifically seem, like, guilty that, like, oh, no, now I'm working for the enemy in order to save my captain in some way. Which you'd think would be, like, the foremost thing on his mind, not mere worry about, you know, law. Um, yeah, I'm I, a I little, guess I, I don't know. I'm not sure. Yeah, that that could be true because mm -hmm. the the reason I was assuming that mm -hmm. um, this code was like a fake yeah. was because they lied about how they escaped. But the reason they lied is right. not because this is a fake code. It's because it's law, law told, them, told not them not to tell. Yeah, yeah. So I think maybe it's just law doesn't want them to interrupt the plan by going to save him. I definitely think that's what Law is thinking right now, for sure. Okay. All right, so I, I maybe, it's, this, maybe it's more simple than I thought it was. That's I, kind yeah, of... yeah, I mean, exactly what you thought was my first thought. And the only reason that I currently think that this straight up was a Yasuie message was because Oda keeps his story simple. I have learned my lesson the hard way, and I just don't think Oda is really trying to pull the wool over our eyes. I, yeah, I think things are generally know? simpler than they look. That's th and, that's definitely uh, that's definitely probably the case because and I, I don't like having to think that way because I I really shouldn't approach any story that way but I've been burned before by overthinking <laughs> Oda's well, writing. Well, I don't I don't think it's like a bad thing to have. It's not bad. I'm just saying. Yeah. But um. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's a Yasui message personally. This is my guess, but we might get more info. So yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't know. So yeah, this is. This is probably okay. I thought it was like a big mystery, but you're right. It's it's more likely the other mm -hmm. way. So we'll learn Hawkins sure. Hawkins has law. I assume, mm -hmm. I assume. Mm, that's just the thing, though. Like, what is yeah. Hawkins going to get out of law now that his crew is gone? I mean, to be fair, law is definitely a much higher value, uh, like uh, prisoner than, you know, just some yeah, random but, fucks on his crew. But he had all four of them right there. Like, he didn't need to release anyone. Unless uh, okay. unless Law is going to tell the truth, but, y you know... You know, I was thinking about It seems kind of naive of Hawkins to, like, let his crew go on the promise that Law would s tell the truth afterwards. Well, I mean, I don't, think, I don't think the exchange was that he would tell the truth. I think the exchange was you'll be our prisoner, and we'll do whatever the fuck we want to you, which we saw last chapter. They were torturing Law, uh, at least a little bit, or just starting to or anything. Um, so they're, like, clearly the intent was to, we get Law so we can... First of all, he's a, a high-value target. We get him out of circulation and, you know, in our hands and whatnot. And just for the price of exchanging these three guys... Now, like, does it make... S now, I, I mean, Law just values his crew so much that he's willing to basically die. He's, he's forfeiting his life by doing this. Look, we know it's One Piece. He's not going to actually die. But according to the logic of the story, he's basically saying, like, I will trade my life for theirs, and, you know, whatever happens, happens. As for Hawkins, though, like, I'm looking... I was trying to analyze this. We see that Hawkins has Law. Law doesn't appear to have handcuffs on yet, I don't think, in this shot. So my guess is... Or maybe he does behind his back. I can't fucking tell. Uh, uh, I don't think Hawkins would just trust Law, though. He doesn't seem like a very trusting man. So I think he only he only released go those guys after he had, like, assurances from Law. Either he was already in Seastone handcuffs, or, like, he knew that Law swore and he would never break his word, or, like, some shonen bullshit like that. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I think something along those lines was done. And it's enough for me to be satisfied. I, I'm quickly checking the manga stream translation mm -hmm. uh, just to see I if there's any I did that difference. too. Uh, it seemed basically identical to me. I couldn't find any substantive differences. Yeah. Yeah, I guess that's it. But well, uh, and 
Yeah, yeah. I guess that, that seems to me, you know, it, it's one of two things. Either it's a legit note from Yasuie, it was, it's a, some secret message that's important, and we will see what happens with that, or it's some kind of Beppo was given, like, a task uh, by Hawkins, either as part of the exchange terms with Law, and, like, he is delivering it, but then, like, Hawkins would have to assume Beppo didn't betray him or, like, change it, which maybe he did because, like, he promised to release Law later. That sounds too complicated. I think it was just a Yasuie message, personally, but whatever. We will find out in the weeks and months to come. Uh, and here we see Beppo and his boys reunited, and I I'm just assuming this is the entire Law crew. Looks yeah. like there's, I don't know, 15 people. I think we can, that's a safe assumption now. Law's crew is free, and just Law is captured, so, okay. Fair enough. I see pretty the small, one girl in the middle there. Uh, crew. You know, we've seen them in a group shot before. I know, like, we can see maybe, like, 10 to 15 heads here. I think they had more than that when we saw the group shot, like, on uh, on Zo or whatever. But there's only, like, maybe, like, 30 of them or something at, at most. So, yep. <coughs> Off we go to Ebisu Town. I can't wait for, for Beppo to, to do something. I can't None wait of them have see... done anything. I can't None wait to them. see them try to break Law out of jail. The most interesting thing about Law's crew at all was simply that Beppo was a mink, and that, like, made it kind of more interesting when we got to Zo, which was all about minks. And it's like, oh, cool, we met one of those guys before, and he's cool kung fu bear. Beyond that, they've, they've literally done nothing. Um, so, please do something, guys. Please. It's just that, I mean, it's the classic problem. There's not space in the narrative to give, like, miscellaneous members of Law's crew time to do stuff. We've got a million other characters to focus on. So I, I very much doubt they will get um, very much spotlight. Maybe one or two tiny little things. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Well, mm -hmm. moving on to Ebisu Town now. Mm -hmm. We have uh, Kanjuro cradling, I, I assume they got Yasuye's body. I forget yes, yes. What, who, who grabbed him, uh, but they got him. Mm -hmm. And they're going to go to Kuri to hold a memorial service. And uh, all, all the all the people, because they ate the thing, they're they're laughing. They can't help but laugh at what's happening. But they're not actually happy. Law. Indeed, indeed, that is a lay issue. And, um, uh, and off they go. Yeah, and then Frankie is on look what looks like a fucking tiger motorbike. I don't think we've seen that before. Uh, or maybe you know, he's just holding out that. like like a <laughs> harness on top of a tiger. My first thought was like, oh, this is probably a drawing of Conjuros. They use those for transportation sometimes. But no, no, I mean, his drawings are like noticeably shitty. That's like the joke with them, which is funny and cool. And this just looks like a normal kind of tiger. I guess Frankie just like got this or like found it. Dude, wouldn't it be fucked up if Frankie found a tiger and like turned it into a cyborg like <laughs> motorbike like him? Because he's done it before to at least one person. Ah, uh, what the fuck? Who did he do it to? Himself. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Cyborg, I mean, it's Frank? it's a little it's a little different to like forcibly well, yeah. <laughs> change a tiger to be your personal motorbike than okay, it is maybe to that tiger, augment yourself. Maybe the tiger would think it's totally sick though, and so you know, thinking that uh, he did, yeah, it, he, and he, it was dope. he got like a like a like a raw steak and like a picture of a motorbike and said, and could, just combined the two, and now it's a tiger. Like like he gave him the the steak. It's like I'll give you the steak if you become my motorbike. And the tiger was like, hmm. oh, I was thinking that he turned the steak a, uh, into a tiger. Um, <laughs> okay, but you know what? Your version makes slightly more sense. <laughs> well, just a little bit more sense. I, I mean, um, if you remember, Vegapunk did turn a lot of people into cyborgs on his on his wintry island. But I think those were. Like injured animals, I think was the idea. I can't. Uh, Vegapunk was not hated to be like a crazy evil scientist or anything. I think they were like injured or. Yeah, he was a know, crazy good either. scientist. Yes, correct, correct. Um, okay. Anyway, off they go. They're riding a weird tiger. There goes Kunoichi Onami and Carpenter Franosuke. You should say Carpenter in Japanese. I don't know what that is, but I'd like to learn. Le Carpenter. Okay, anyway, here we go. On our way to Curry, it seems. There we go at a boat wharf. We see people passing by, but uh-oh, looks like there's a, a checkpoint being enacted. We have to scan everybody's face to make sure the prisoners don't escape. And lol, epic meme, my dude. <laughs> oh, you know so, what? Okay, pretty funny. Pretty funny callback to when they read the paper about Luffy pretty, getting pretty captured. Pretty funny callback, but also a confirmation mm -hmm. that it was not uh, non-diegetic a face. Oh, shit. Shit, that that you know I had. She even is of actually that. making that face because that's uh. how they get past this. Okay. So I'm your just, dreams are fucking ruined. I'm just gonna say 
that that Robin is only doing this because of the bad influence of the ugly, ugly straw hat crew on her very, very pretty self. And if it wasn't for these bad influences, she would never lower herself to such things. Uh, so, you know, die, the rest <laughs> of you straw hats. Leave my pretty wife alone. Do you, uh, do you think okay. she learns, like, the sort of, mm -hmm. like, um, you know, changing your face to a f funny expression to get past a checkpoint from the Revolutionary Army? Is that, like, a thing they learn how to do? Oh, I mean, it is, but they probably know quite a bit about disguise. Although, you know, uh, Robin, even young, uh, in, early in her life, probably had to develop such high-level techniques of disguise yeah, and escape and whatnot. I really don't know, like, we haven't got that much information about what Robin learned or was doing during the Revolutionary Army. That's NC-17 rated. They can't include that. Oh, wait, you mean in the Army. Okay, no, never mind. <laughs> I meant when she says, I'm 16, I'll do anything, as she famously said. But yes, uh, we don't really know. <laughs> will you will you take some weed? Will you do some drug? No, never. Uh, I, I don't know. She probably practiced with her devil fruit. Uh, probably learned some. I, uh, I, I, I'm 16. Sort of I'll do anything. Will you vote for me? Uh, I don't think I can. <laughs> oh, I oh you're gonna die. Um, I I assume the thing about Robin is she's always been uh, you know information secret e kind of character. I don't remember if she's the one who told everybody about the the Rio Poneglyph. Or sorry, not the Rio Poneglyph. The Road Poneglyph. The the red ones that combine to, um, you know, tell the way to get to uh, to uh, Raftel and whatnot. No, they 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 found um, Ninja Man. Is that just in, encoded on Zo? On, on Zo? That's where they got the information. Yeah, like, uh, that, that, that's yeah, right. That's they right. met they met uh, what's his face, and he was telling them. Rizo? Did well, Rizo tell them that? Raizo and Inuarashi and Nekomamushi, they were all there yeah. explaining how that worked. And they were like, right, oh, right. my God. I mean, so they couldn't read Poneglyphs, but Robin can read Poneglyphs. But they did ride with Gold Roger, so they probably knew, uh, you know, some, some important details there. Yeah. Um, also, and, by the uh, way, Brooke yeah, yeah. is just like a dead guy walking next to them, and they don't oh, really right. to do anything. He's, I guess he's just part... Well, okay, the next panel, they're like, hurry and get them out of here. There's something following them. Okay, this is clearly a joke. And the joke is both... That they're they don't look like their normal selves, and also that they seem haunted by a g -g -g ghost. So this is just more incentive for the border people to just let them by, you know, fast and not ask questions. I mean, <laughs> it's a little it's completely ridiculous. Like, oh, oh there's a, just a skeleton there. They're not screaming. They're just like, ah, oh, geez, get get out get out of here. This is one of those. Th I mean, it's for comic effect. I it is funny. So you know, whatever. I'm not gonna worry about it too much. Um. All right. Enough of that shit. Off we go. They are heading on their way to Curry, I think. I don't know what these guys are actually doing right now. Usopp and Brooke and Robin. Do you know what they're doing? Do you know where they're um, going? Well, they escaped. Like they're on their way th to this Curry. Is all, this is all everybody escaping from the flower capital. So Otoko yeah, you're right. uh, is escaped with Robin, Usopp, mm -hmm, and Brooke. Mm -hmm. And they're somewhere else now. I don't know where they're going. It said on the on the little mini map. It says like flower capital en route to Curry. So apparently, it says they're en route to Curry with an arrow pointing towards Curry, and then we see our characters moving left, where the arrow points. I assume they're headed to Curry. I can't remember why, but they, I'm they, sure they, they, they have may a good have, they may have said something in the last chapter, like meet back at the, the place or whatever. And yeah, they know yeah. where they're going. And don't you bully me in the comments for not remembering every fucking detail of all these political maneuverings. I'll kill your house. Okay, anyway, uh, we've got... So, so, okay, here they are. They're on a boat. Off they go on their way. They're rowing down the river, and they pull out Otsuko. She's no longer being hidden or whatever. Uh, and she's cuddling with Robin. Oh, I, God, I wish that was me. Uh, incredible. <laughs> incredible. Is that not one of the most peaceful scenes you've ever... This is literally like... What's that scene of, like, Mary holding uh, Jesus Christ, maybe you've heard of him, in that, you know, old gothic painting or whatever it was. Oh, you know, Otoko is totally a Jesus Christ parallel. <laughs> Kinda. Uh, uh, fucking well, Yasuke, her dad, her dad was crucified, literally crucified. Oh, shit. Um, so son there of Christ. you go. Otoko, son of, son of, son of Jesus. Jap Christ. That's oh, because she is Otoko named Otoko, is. which means boy, so it totally works. Son Lol. of God. Good. Anyone? Makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I want to hug and cuddle Robin, but alas, I'll just kill myself. You know, you know, yeah. uh, you know how like in you know merchandise sales they have mm. they have like Tony Tony Chopper is the cute mascot of, of One Piece. You can buy plushes of him. Mm -hmm. You can't really buy plushes of Luffy. I guess you can, but like I'm sure they exist. 
I but a plush of Otoko would be kind of really cool. I, she I has, like that. She has. She's like a Pikachu, but a human being. The only the only problem is like all of us as like longtime readers of One Piece, like we we can just feel that uh, Otoko is a character who really is not that important in the grand scheme of things. It's just that One Piece is is so fucking long. It, I'll tell you, if One Piece was just the story of like it was exactly the same length. It started like you know. A, a year ago in this, you know, land of Wano, and it's all the same characters, whatever, then, like, plushes of Otoko would absolutely, like, be selling and, like, be popular and whatnot. But it's just that in the context of the gargantuan monster that is One Piece, I mean, for someone like me, it's, I don't know, it just, like, feels like, oh, yeah, Otoko's fine right now. We're going to move on and, like, forget about her, and then we'll, you know, do other things. That'll be cool. I don't know. If you, you, do, you, do you understand the the... The emotion I'm trying to convey here. It's yeah. hard to put into words. It's sort of like... Not despair, but it's just sort of like an unfortunate circumstance. Yes. It's, it's the scale of the property. Is such, Like, who's going to buy... Imagine, imagine being the kind of person who has, like, a Rebecca poster from Dress Rosa. Like, imagine being that person. It's like, talk about having the worst taste... Uh, you know, in the world. <laughs> Rebecca's not even that bad. She's not, like, a nightmare of a character. But she's so boring compared to, like, so many of these other characters. Like, I don't know, fucking Mihawk. Have, like, a Mihawk poster. Now, that's a character who's got a big dick and a cool stash. And I can get down to that guy. Uh, Otoko is, like, I mean, she's way more likable than Rebecca. She does way more things and is way funnier and all those good things. But... I don't know. Still, still, the, the, the point remains. Okay, anyway, forget all of that. Let's go on and talk about what's happening here at Curry, the southwestern abandoned port. Yes, there's, there's ships. a <laughs> lot of ships. They look really cool. Um, they do. So, some background artist tried it, like his darndest to, to capture the, the, the historical accurate sort of shapes and stuff. He drew Indeed. a lot of lines. He, he's <laughs> arms tired. This is nice. This is a good image. <laughs> it's a very nice one. And apparently these are all ships that have been gathered over the years by Asura himself in preparation for some 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 elusive purpose one day. Well, they, now, they just they explained got... it. They explained it right here. It's not elusive. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Okay. They said, <laughs> with these, we will be able to transport thousands of soldiers to Onigashima because uh, uh, all the other ships are in control of Orochi. Indeed. Indeed. Uh, so way to go. I mean, without these, who knows how they would have got there. But now, as Kinemon says, I will ask for, uh, Frontosuke to repair these. I'm finally starting to get a picture of our final raid. And me too. Now it's like, okay, now we have transportation. We know, we've like identified like, okay, the prisoners from the mines, the fucking, uh, those guys locked up in the jail, the thousand crew members, uh, Law's crew probably, uh, Killer and his crew maybe. Um, and like the samurai bands and, of Asura yeah. and other guys, we've got troops now. We, the, yeah, the, there's the there's potential for um, killers, uh, not killers crew, uh, kids crew to be yes. around. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. There's the potential that whatever Zoro finds in the sword place, that samurai man, the oh, bridge weaponry guy, and whatnot, mm -hmm. like he might join because he's like he seems like an honorable guy who might care about Lord Odin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, true, true. So it might not just be getting a sword back, he may be getting an ally or something. So lots of things coming together, and we've already seen uh, the, the Inurarashi and Kunamon doing things in preparation. They were getting weapons, they were getting materials, they were getting food. Uh, now they have ships, uh, they were recruiting people, this is all, like, coming together. Yep, yep. It's been pretty cool, it's been pretty cool. Um, so there you go. Oh, and now we cut to Onigashima. Let's see what's going on at Big Boy Town. So it looks like there's quite a ruckus, fruckus, fracus, fuckus, as Big Mom is chowing down on all this food that these fuckboys are cooking as fast as they can. But alas, Big Mom hungers for more. Oh, and we get a great shot of our three boys, Jack, King, and Queen, right across the line. Good to see you, Jack. Looks like you're up on your feet again. Good. You're not dead yeah. forever. <laughs> Way to go. Uh, Jack, it looks a lot bigger than I thought. I thought he was smaller than these two. Yeah. Oh, I guess he's actually, he looks actually literally bigger than them now that we he, see him all yeah. together. Yeah. Like, he, huh, he's okay. behind, he is behind King, who is behind Queen, slightly. Indeed. And he looks taller than both of them and bigger and... 
What if he's standing on a box just to feel important, uh, you know, <laughs> so he can feel like he's a oh, big yeah, man like, in charge? Like, you can't see his legs because they're, they're cropped off by, like, the sweets that are being pushed there. What if they're, Indeed. like, they're tiny? <laughs> they don't actually reach the floor. He's just got a big crate. I mean, he does have that old One Piece, that Oda classic tiny leg, you know, hulking a torso physique that Oda loves so well, and as do I. Uh, but, okay, in, in any case, what's, what's King saying here? Uh, King Ojas, I pushed her off the waterfall, and Queen's yelling at him, oh, you fucked up, King. Uh, uh, Jack rightly asks, why did you bring him here, Queen? What were you thinking? Uh, Queen didn't know what else to do. And now here, Big Mom comments on King, speaking directly to King, the number one most, uh, like I guess, like the strongest ally of Kaido, his right hand, is like, hey, King, I'll forgive you if you join my crew, as these people like to do. I really like this kind of dynamic that's going on between all these like, Yonko like, when Shanks met Whitebeard, he was just like, hey, Marco, join my crew, fucko. And Marco's like, nah. But, <laughs> like, they can see the value of these of these extremely high-level, like, commanders and whatnot. Like, King's got to be at least Katakuri level, if not higher. He's got to be. And yeah. uh, I want to see that. He definitely looks the part. He sure does. He sure does. And, oh, and, and Qu- uh, uh, Big Mom comments fascinatingly that, like, hey, King, join my crew. There's three races. Count them, three races. Which I, I was wondering if that includes giants. If she's I definitely that. think that includes giants, yes. But but we know that she doesn't want giants, though, because she hates them. You think she, I mean... No, mm, I, th- I feel like she would probably want giants to... If they, if they mm-hmm. accepted her, then yeah. she would want them. The reason... Yeah, probably. The reason true. at the moment is like she was she was trying to get, um, she had a plan to like marry someone. Into oh, yeah, she was going to marry family. Lola to Loki, King yes, of the King that, of the Giants, that, that, I think. Or so, so she did want a giant on her oh, thing. Yeah. But, like they hate you know her. What? That's the. That's You're the way totally it right. You're totally right. Okay, so okay, again, here I go overthinking it. I'm. Sh- we know that the giants are a race, not in her crew. That's probably a thing. And so apparently, there's there's total of three. And she says to King, one of those races was supposedly extinguished, but you're alive and standing right there. And King, like a badass, just says, I refuse. So, okay, uh, blowing open the door. Apparently, I am liking King more and more every fucking second that passes. He's all, okay, we can see he's a big dude with wings. So, okay, we've seen some human beings with wings before, namely the Skypeans. Uruj is one. Uh, fucking, you know, Enaru was one before. He literally ripped off his own wings because he's a god and put that weird lightning thing on himself. Um, but this guy's got way bigger wings. So I don't know if that's implying something, you know, like mysterious. Like a gargoyle or something strange. I was thinking like a griffin man or like an, like yeah. an angel cor- correlate of some capacity. I, I mean, think, I mean, it could, knows? yeah, it could some, be some sort of angel he thing. It could be your Especially, angel or your devil. Yeah, because like, uh, he, <laughs> yeah. I mean... He's burning. Like, he's, he's on, on fire. fire. He has a pterodon. He could be like or, a fireman. Whatever it was. Like yeah, a, yeah. a dinosaur pterodon thing. But he's also mm-hmm. on fire. Mm-hmm. So, like, whatever his race yep. is could be like a flaming, like a... Fire elemental like a, kind of Like a something. Prometheus angel sort of... Well, Prometheus is already a, a, a term. But you know the, yeah, the Prometheus with, legend. Like, he, he, uh, he brought yeah. fire down. He's like, like a flaming cool guy. But, like, all of a sudden, this whole... Okay, and now, now, this moment right now is the first time that I've thought, like, okay, now I'm glad Big Mom is part of this arc now. Now I'm like, okay, this is a specific narrative thing that is interesting and would not be happening if Big Mom wasn't here and couldn't be done without her. This, like, obsession with, like, all the different races of the planet and wanting them all to be part of her crew, that's always been a fascinating thing about yeah. Big Mom. And I, as I've said she, many times, she is the I least love Big racist. Mom. She's the least racist uh, character in One Piece. Actually, when, she's, she's actually super racist because when she sees a group of people that are all one race standing together, she gets super pissed and she goes and she kills them all. She's like, we gotta mix them up, guys. We gotta, we gotta intermingle this thing. This pisses me off to have just uh, one group in one place. Very progressive. Very progressive crew. I'm a big fan. Um, but, uh, I mean, this is this is just, this is cool. This is a unique Big Mom thing. Uh, I'm really curious. Okay, so right now we know whatever the fuck uh, King is. We don't know what race he is. I'm sure we're going to learn more. Giants. And what's the other race? What's the third one? I don't um, know. Hmm. Maybe it's what Kaido is, some sort of demon man or something. Who, May- who maybe the fuck it's knows? A- Maybe it's uh, the Mexicans under King Tacos. <laughs> it's she just Mexicans, those elusive <laughs> Mexicans. Yeah, that's probably so it. <laughs> exotic, so 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 hard to find. 
Uh, maybe it's Americans under President Abe Lincoln or whatever the fuck his name was. Ha- ha- Hamburg? Was it Hamburger? Ham- ham- King Hamburger. That's fucking something. dope. <laughs> He's fucking Hamburger. Did you know that Ben Franklin, uh, at a quote, when America was founded at the, at the Congressional Conference or whatever the fuck it was in Pennsylvania, he said, um, oh, oh, uh, we are a new nationality. We require a new nation. So maybe it is the race of Americans that she really needs, starting with President Hamburger. Okay, <laughs> anyway, enough of that shit. Um, uh, so Big Mom's like, ah, fuck you, King, you won't join me. She, now, she doesn't get mad. She's just like, ah, that's too bad, you won't join. Now, take the chains off, please. She's very cordial. She's not, like, freaking out or anything. Oh, yeah, like she doesn't get like cool. that. She, she she always laughs about things. I remember when she was doing this in Whole Cake, where she's it's like, like join my crew. Like or, like, yeah, like yeah. When after saying to Luffy, like, haha, well, you know... I'll, I'll forgive you, you know, whatever, if you join yep. my crew. And Luffy's like, mm-hmm. fuck you. He's like, ha ha, stupid kid. Like, she doesn't get mad that often. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, I don't know, I, I find it uh, respectful, I guess, or respectable. But anyway, so the crew is there, they're quaking in their boots. Oh my god, Queen being a bat. See, uh, and again, Queen, uh, Jack is, I don't know, he's not, like, timid, timid. Jack's not doing much, but Queen is actively yelling at Big Mom. This is just ma- doing a lot to make me like uh, Jack, King, and Queen. Not not so much Jack, but King and Queen are having a lot of personality. They're, like, not scared of Big Mom. They're just yelling at her, calling her a dumb bitch. Uh, hilarious. Hilarious. Way to go, guys. I'm finally getting some character. Now, everybody else in the crew has zero personality. Um, so that's that's great. But whatever. That doesn't matter. Anyway, so so here we go. One of the guys is whispering. Now, I believe this was confirmed a long time ago. We just see a crewman being like, did you guys know that Big Mom and Kaido used to be in the same pirate crew? Which uh, is the Rocks, as far as we know. Yes. Was that confirmed? I believe that was confirmed, right? That was Yeah, they were talking about it near Reverie, the Marines. Yes, that's right, that's right. And, uh, and in comes Big Dick Kaido. Walking in on the scene, big Mongolian-looking motherfucker. And here we have it, live, face-to-face, Yonko v. Yonko, Kaido and Big Mom in one fucking panel. And just says, uh, do me a favor, take these fucking cuffs off. And they're like, no, 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 that must have been a joke. But Kaido says, no, take them off. And here they go, standing up. It's been decades since they faced each other. She pulls out Napoleon, who's speaking and is happy to be back. And everyone's very amused by a talking sword that looks epically funny. Um, Kaido said, I'd kill you if you came here. Big Mom says, fuck you, I didn't come here just to die. And they do a big clash, and there it is, the big cloud moment. Now, of course, I'm sure we all remember, long, long ago, that faded meeting between Blackbeard and Red-Haired Shanks when they clashed sword v. sword to Yonko, and it split the sky exactly like this. Ooh, Possibly how Shokuhaki? Really? You forgot? Yeah, but it's it's exactly the same thing. They split the heavens with their with their power clashing, which I assume is a how Shokuhaki thing, but... Um, We'll That's pretty fucking cool. I love the imagery there. It's, um, it's I love Queen's uh, reaction to it. His, I his, like, the, yeah. <laughs> his face extends, it stretches so much. So much personality in Queen. That, this is why I like Queen. So much personality. I, I, w- I wish Jack was in this too, because it would give Jack a little more personality too, but not, he's just kind of a grump. He's just mean. Yeah, Jack, Jack's sort of like the shy kid that nobody remembers in Whoa. school. Yeah, so he acts out and bullies other kids because he's bullied by his big brothers, king and queen, and also his abusive father. <laughs> anyway, the crew's freaking out, and we're all going to die. Uh, and that's it, and that's the end yeah. of the chapter. What do you think is going to result from this? Like, obviously, they're not going mm. to fight to the death. This Indeed. is probably just sort of like a greeting strike. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But they don't like each other. They're, they're, fu- they're you know, they're warring Yonko. Kaido like, said is, he would kill happen? Big Mom if she came. Like, that's, he just said it again. I yeah. told you I'd kill you if you came here. Um, I, uh, okay, because, like, here, here's just one thing that won't happen. Big Mom's crew could show up with their boat all of a sudden, grab Big Mom, and leave. Like, that, okay, that could happen. That would resolve this current conflict. Like, that's definitely not going to happen. That doesn't make any sense. That would be they, a that, total That would be, line. like, a big... Yeah, a big waste of a whole moment. I, I, exactly. So I'm trying to think of something that, like, addresses what's happening right now and is still, like, relevant to the overall plot in some way. But, like, I like Big Mom is alone. She doesn't have the rest of her crew. She has no... She could maybe steal a ship or something to escape. I don't know... I honestly have no idea how this is going to resolve and, like, what even the point of this clash right now is. I guess Big Mom could, like 
hurt Kaido, which could help, you know, when Luffy invades, like, oh, it's a good thing Big Mom, like, hurt Kaido, so now we can hurt him too. Even that, I mean, that doesn't seem very satisfying, and it's not for, like, another week, the festival or whatever, like, eight days or something, so doesn't seem very likely. A- any yeah. ideas? Any thoughts? I, I think the most likely thing mm-hmm. is that they're going to put aside their differences and stop fighting mm. because uh, they talk about Straw Hat Luffy and how he's a piece of shit, and they're like, mm. oh, yeah, that fuck that guy. You know, so like this this young upstart got got you know people saying in the news that he is like a an emperor now. Right, that's stupid. Right. You know, they, stupid. They, they both want to kill him. <laughs> um, but if you know, like maybe they fight and it's a stalemate, and they're like, ah, fuck this, I'm tired. Yeah, yeah. And and so they're just sort of, it's just sort of weird. I don't know how. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure how like. Kaido would let Big Mom just leave or like have right, her stay exactly. over. Something probably, big would need to happen sleepover? to stop them. They are no, the old buddy best friend sleepover, just like the old days. You know, people have been saying for a long time that they think that um, uh, the triplets of Katakuri, Daifuku, and Oven are Kaido's kids. This is the theory going around. And I've seen that theory because of not, uh, specifically the, Oven's face. Oven or, looks or one just of them. like Kaido in his face. Yeah. It's, it's very true. And, like, there there are way crazier theories than that. We Big Mom is a known slut. She's a known breeder, as they say. And, uh, like, they, we know they were on the same crew. They knew each other a long time ago. Not the craziest thing. I, frankly, that would be kind of dope. That would be kind of dope. If, like, maybe Big Mom's crew shows up, the fucking oven, maybe Katakuri and Daifuku are like, Papa, there you are. Let's have tea and crumpets, sir. <laughs> And then they all have a good time. You, is there you any imagine chance? If this, this fighting is because of alimony or something. <laughs> okay, uh, give me one sec. I'm just going to see if Kaido's age is confirmed and see like if I can do any quick maths on on this kind of stuff. I would, I would just assume he's about the same age as, as Lin Lin, unless he's a literal dragon, in which case he could be really, really old. I kind of get the feeling he's younger than, than um, Big Mom, but I, I don't know. Okay, so I went to the wiki. The wiki does not confirm his age. Uh, let me just see what Big Mom's age is real quick, and She's then like I want to see. She's like sixty-five. Yeah, I think she, I think that's about right. Um, let me see, Charlotte Linlin. She is sixty-eight. Okay, cool. And let me just see how old Oven is. And I think they're they're all the same age. So like him, Katagori, and, and Daifuku are in fact triplets. He'd probably be like forty. He is forty-eight. So that means Big Mom had him when she was 20, um, which was 48 years ago, obviously, because he's 48. Hang on. Um, what's her, how old is Prospero? Let's find. I will check. it. Probably like one year older. Prospero. He is the oldest son. Prospero is... Hang on. Hang on. Got it right here. Prospero is 50. So he's two years older than his brother's. Okay, so she had her first child at 18. So she's really been working the entire time. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. And she's been having them constantly ever since. She's probably unironically pregnant right now. Because, you know, why wouldn't you be? <laughs> Incredible. Although, you know, do you think there's any... I'm just going to throw out a gross question. Do you think she gives birth in, like, a, an unusual way because she has literally, like, the life-life devil fruit? Do you think there's any weird unusual way that she produces offspring or is it the old-fashioned nine months in the oven and out they come what do you think <laughs> uh maybe she can do it real fast maybe that's the life it's like nine minutes in the oven <laughs> i i'm just gonna guess that it's the usual way uh, you know the, uh, i might think otherwise but w- humans in one piece are not like normal humans like your average 68 year old woman in, in real life probably can't have kids or it's going to be very rare but for big mom it's no problem because humans in one piece live to like 130 easy that's just like once you're like old so they they live like i don't know what's that like twice the normal age of human beings so uh so yeah plus she's a freak and a monster and like an insane person anyway with her biology and her size and whatnot so whatever she's got crazy powers um anyway i guess that's it i i have no idea how this is going to resolve maybe some of the theories that we just put out will be part of it like her crew is still out there somewhere i feel like her crew will get involved in some capacity um maybe yeah, it, w- it would be it would be very know. strange if like the the fight between these two yeah is like 
kind of big because then what about kind of steals the, the main character? From... Yeah, what about yeah, the main yeah. characters of the fucking manga? Like Luffy and the guys. Like it can't be. It can't be that big. There's just no way. It would be such they, a weird they could... writing thing. All right, here's here's one other thing. They could yeah. fight nonstop for eight days until the thing happens. They definitely could do that. But, but you know, that, again, would the only reason I don't think that's going to happen is because that would be, like, a weird distraction from, like, that would totally, like, Big Mom's the real enemy here, not the fucking Straw Hats. Who gives a fuck about them? Big Mom is here. And this is, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying that's going to happen, but even right now, there's a little bit of the spotlight being stolen from the Straw Hats by Big Mom's presence. They're the ones who are supposed to defeat Kaido, not fucking Big Mom. And, uh, again, we don't know if she'll even be involved. Maybe she'll literally help him, and, like, they'll team up against Luffy. But even yeah, then, I it's mean, like, well, I want to focus on Kaido right now. Big Mom is dope, but she just had her arc. Let's have the Kaido focus now. Um, Big Mom's probably just, like, a better character than Kaido. She definitely is so far, and way more interesting. But, I mean, yeah, we haven't we had haven't, his flashback yet. We haven't yet, really or, gotten you know. enough. I mean, if there's anything, any good time to, like, mm-hmm. have, like, a, a cool Kaido casual conversation moment yeah it would be if big mom and him stop fighting mm-hmm. and talk about how they're gonna kill luffy and and you know i yeah the, I and definitely they, they, they gonna... reminisce about the old days and you know big mom asks him annoying questions and he gets all gruff and he starts drinking like fuck up shut up like <laughs> i want to see his personality come through the only time we've ever seen it is when he was really drunk as a dragon and that was only a little bit yep very very true very true I feel that a lot of this, I feel that the whole point here of having two Yonkos together, that we're building to, like, stuff about the rocks, stuff about the rocks coming back, you know, like as we said, we know these two are in the same pirate crew, who was their leader, we have no other information, um, but, uh, like, Garp being afraid of them and talking about, like, them coming back in some capacity, I feel like that's the point of this particular getting together of these two characters, and I, I think that's what Shanks met with the Gorosei to discuss. Because obviously he was too young to be, like, in the rocks. He was on, you know, Gold Rogers crew and all that shit. Um, but, like, I, I, this is my guess. I think this is Oda's point of getting these two guys together, is to lead to the idea of the rocks. Because, I, I don't oh, know, we're, right. we're in such endgame like, One Piece now. I feel like the... I feel like Oda is going to bring back... Like, at this point... Luffy is fighting Yonko. He's uh, doing it now. He's fighting him one-on-one. He's fought Big Mom a couple times, fought Kaido once, got curb stomped. But he'll, you know, he's learning skills so he can do better next time. I feel like the real, like, the big boss is going to be the leader of the Rocks. Like, someone above even the Yonko. That's who Luffy needs as, like, his real final boss battle at, like, the end of One Piece. So that that's what kind of narratively I think that this um, this whole Rocks and these guys being buddies is building to. Yeah, yeah I, 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 I guess I do like the idea that future potential things like mm-hmm. these guys teaming up and being more of a threat later on Yeah. Uh, as the Rocks Pirates is being set up now. Mm-hmm. Um, it just is unfortunate that Wano is so fucking stacked full of stuff So much already. stuff, yeah. It's tough. That's kind well, of unavoidable. We'll, I mean, but, we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll see how well this slots in later. For sure. Like right now, I can't tell whether this is like a good distraction or a bad one. Uh, that I, I very much agreed. Very much agreed. So I, I take no position just yet. But uh, as always, I'm just airing my potential fears and airing what I think you know may, may have been a wiser way to go. But as always, we'll let Oda do what he does, and we'll uh, we'll hang in there and we'll let you know what we think about it as it happens. All right. Anything else to say about the chapter? I'm I'm tapped. I'm tapped. I'm good. I'm I'm done. Well, thanks for being here, everybody. Hey, if you like our discussions about these chapters, patreon.com slash thepodcastpirates is the place to show your support. One dollar, you're no longer a filthy white, but you are a honorable colored, and uh, more money, the more we like you, and the higher rank you get in our beloved pirate crew. We will be the one to take on the rocks if we get your financial support. (laughs) Um, And uh, we'll see you soon with another chapter. It won't be too long till the next one's out. And God, can uh, I not wait? I think uh, you should make sure, like, to mention that the, the when you Discord. say filthy, filthy white, that that is like the color like, of your I'm Discord. T- the, the, the racial group, you know, like, of, like white, like Anglicans. Oh yes, that's, yes, yes, that's what yeah, I'm referring yeah. to. Yeah, yeah. Just, just to be clear Caucasian. on that. 
a Caucasian like filthy Caucasians, <laughs> yeah, not then, a fan. And then, then you got like the Reds and the Blues, and those and guys the are better. The actually, there, there uh, are no greens. Native Americans. We're the greens. We, we are the. That's true. That's true. We are the greens. What's a blue? Like a. I mean, Sanji is blue, and he's like French. So I'm gonna call the French the blues. Yeah, and there's a purple. Who's purple? Um, uh, black people, because they they like purple, right? Uh, that that's you know. There you go. That works. And there's other colors too. Oh, they're all good. <laughs> so choose your racial group, everybody, in the pod D Discord uh, by clicking down below. You start as a lowly white, but you can aspire to more by giving us money. Uh, have a have a have a good time, everybody. Have lots of fun. And we talk there. It's a very active Discord. Talk about One Piece, theorizing, looking for a place to go. It's free. If you're an idiot, pay money. <laughs> then you're a genius. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There you go, everybody. Okay, that's it for real. See you next time with another episode of the Podcast. Have a good night. Bye. Goodbye.